What do you see out there in the dark? I, you know, I come from a family of adventurers. That's always been a big part of my life. When I was a kid, in the dead of winter, my grandfather woke me up at four in the morning to come outside because there was a meteor shower with meteors soaring across the sky every four seconds. We just stood there for hours in the cold snow, staring up at the sky and counting all the meteors and watching their reflection over the ocean as they all zipped by. And there was this intimate connection between the sea and, and the skies. My grandfather really inspired this love of adventure and this perspective of the universe through science and the natural world. I'm Eliza McNitt, and I'm a filmmaker. I'm a writer and director and a virtual reality creator. I'm in Miami for Art Week to show Spheres at Filmgate Interactive. This is where so much of my family lives, and we also get to bring the experience to a totally new audience. Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How's everything going? So far, so good. Awesome. For now, this is going to be our first phase. Yes. The two yes. additional ones. Spheres is a interactive virtual reality series about the music of the universe. The first episode, you have the whole solar system. Yeah. So as far as positioning it, I would position it in a way where the solar system would be like this. There's so many incredible images of space that we've all grown up on that have really defined the way that we perceive the universe. But I wanted to create an experience that put you inside of them and made you feel like they were alive. Okay, great. That's gonna look really cool. My yeah. grandmother's coming on Sunday. I just cool. figured that out. So she's she's gonna come and experience everything. Nice, the first yeah. time she's done it at a festival? Um, yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll just see how people interact with it. They're gonna love it. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Even as a child, one of my very first gifts that I can remember was a microscope that my grandfather gave me. I was so excited because I got to see a perspective that I'd never seen before. I go fishing and I use them as my specimens and cut them in half and look at all their organs underneath the microscope. I was so fascinated by the inner workings of our universe. I see science and art as being deeply connected because I think that scientific inquiry is very creative. This is the infrared universe, and so you can see all of this matter that you can't see with our eyes, but it all Wait, exists. Why, why? The tools we have to perceive the universe, our eyes, our ears, they're not attuned to everything that's out there in the universe because we, you know, we evolved to exist on our planet. My very first virtual reality experience, I put on an Oculus Rift DK2 and I was on a roller coaster. It was horrible. I felt like I was going to puke, but I was suspended in the sky looking down at a town and I couldn't feel my feet. There was something fascinating about the fact that I had just completely transformed my reality into something I'd never experienced before. I wanted people to feel the way that I just felt falling on a roller coaster about astrophysics. I've always had to prove myself. In my science class in high school, I was one of the only girls in the class. In my directing class of 20 in NYU, I was also one of the only women in that class. 
you know, these are fields dominated by male voices. In film school, I declared I was a director. I first had to just say, this is what I'm going to do. And then so many people don't believe you. And I definitely made a lot of projects that haven't seen the light of day that I threw my whole heart into. The truth is, is that you have to fight to express these stories that you want to tell. Even when people question me because I'm a director that doesn't look like their idea of what a director should be, you know, I love to prove people wrong. Spheres transports you through the cosmos. In the experience, you surf on Saturn's rings, fall into a black hole, play with the songs of the universe as you discover that space is not silent, it's actually full of sounds. Grandma, you're going to start at the Big Bang. These are all stars. Mm -hmm. You can reach out and touch them. And you make music when you move. I've grown up with the voices of Stephen Hawking and Carl Sagan teaching me about the cosmos. And I wanted to tell that story, but through the perspective of three different generations of women, played by Millie Bobby Brown, Jessica Chastain, and Patti Smith. Three distinct female voices telling the story of the universe. This is so exquisite. Hello. Come here. Yes, Grandma. Listen, baby. Mm -hmm. This is the most magnificent thing I've ever seen. This. <laughs> Thank you. Spheres had its world premiere at the Venice Film Festival. The best VR award goes to Spheres by Elisa Magnet. That was just such a out-of-body experience to receive the Grand Prix in a room where Alfonso Coron had just won and Guillermo del Toro was president of the jury to be in the conversation alongside these other films was such a unbelievable moment that I will treasure forever. It is truly remarkable to see the oldest festival in the world embrace the newest form of storytelling. Thank you. Last night, a seven-year-old girl in a pink dress and sparkling silver shoes walked up to Spheres, threw on the headset, and was suddenly completely lost in a world of science and technology and STEM. This is who I want to be seeing this kind of work. I hope it was a strange and majestic experience that maybe she'll remember like a far-off dream Maybe it's something that will inspire her curiosity in science. Do you need a minute? I went to the sun and it was like, oh my God. <laughs> Did you like hitting the planets? Well, yeah. I've, I've never felt anything like that. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you, that. thank you. Wow. <laughs> right now, virtual reality is the Wild West. What I love about this community of people is that, you know, we are the risk takers developing the stories of tomorrow.
My grandfather was a scientist at MIT. He is a pioneer in his field in the way that I wish to be a pioneer in my own. He's always been a driving force in my journey as a scientist and a filmmaker. Hello. Hi, Grandpa. Hi. Hello, Eliza. <laughs> Hi. So good to nice see to see you. You oh, too. So how was the trip? It was fantastic. Well, I saw the Venice Film Festival. Yes, oh, boy, that, thank you. I saw you walking up the red carpet with more eyeshadow than <laughs> I ever knew you. like my grandmother or my grandfather who are seeing this new technology for the first time and they're completely overwhelmed with this sense of wonder and awe. My grandmother was in a wheelchair but yesterday we sent her to Saturn and you see grown men become children again. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth. <laughs> well, that is really fabulous. Thank really you. fabulous. Thank you, Grandpa. I don't know how you ever could dream up such a thing. <laughs> oh, gee, Wes. I had that ugly feeling that I'm out there in space and I'm going into this black hole and God knows what. <laughs> It really makes you feel you're a part of it. I'm glad I was sitting down. <laughs> you know, I had to wait 101 years for that, didn't I? You sure did. Yeah. That's marvelous. Don't ever underestimate the power of a woman. It felt like I had put a piece of my heart out in the universe, and then suddenly people who shared my passion answered back. I think science can be very emotional and very human. That's what I wanted people to feel about space. When we look up at the stars, we're staring at our ancestors. We truly are made of stardust. <laughs> 